Yaakov is obviously connected to the noun Akiv, hill, but it is also related to the biblical Hebrew word Okva, which has to do with deception. Okay. Okay, so that's how Isa saw this in the verse that we've seen before. Yes, Ron? So when I see Jacob's name there, the, the Yaakov. Yaakov. I, yeah, Yaakov. When I see the yield in the front, could that also be related to the second person with verbs? You okay. Know, like no, he, no, 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 not, no, no, not no, at all. Third person. Not oh, third per I meant third person. I'm sorry. I meant that third person. You are not just right. You are hundred percent right. Okay. And and I want to show you this in this verse as well. Not just Yaakov, but also his father, and right. also his son Yosef. Yes. So you can see how the three patriarchs, Abram, Isaac, and Jacob, all chose to give their favorite sons names that are third person masculine singular form of the yiktol or possibly the jasif okay the jasif form okay which is the way to wish something in hebrew okay so it's either yiktol or jasif and they all have these third person masculine singular form abram calls his son yitzhak and what's the other What's the other son of Abraham? Ishmael. Yishmael. Yishmael. Right. Yishmael. Again, third person masculine singular form of the verb Yishma and El. Okay. Is that he talks to God? Is that what that is? No, God no. listens. God listens. Okay, the opposite. Okay. Right. Yishma, the root Shin Mem Ein. You know right. this root, guys, right? Shema Yisrael, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Yichad. Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord is one. So Shin Mem Ein has to do with hearing. And Abram gives both his children, okay, Yitzchak and Yishmael, Yiktol verbs name, third person masculine singular. They all start with the this Yod, okay? And uh, Yitzchak gives Yaakov his name, Okay, with a yod at the beginning. And Yaakov gives Yosef, Joseph, his son, this uh, name starting with this third person masculine singular yod. Some would even say that Yehuda is related to that, but that's a little bit more of a stretch. I want to take the opportunity to have those of you who are, who have a good background to notice few things about the differences between Yitzchak and Yaakov. Both of them are, as we said, third person masculine singular Yiktol forms or or Joseph forms. Okay, for that matter, they're they're similar. Okay. Nonetheless, the, this one takes the O and this one takes the A. Okay. Like Yishmor, Yishmor versus Yishma. Okay, Yishmor with an O and Yishma with an A, with an A. And what is the reason for that? The reason is the guttural letter. Whenever or whenever the guttural is in the second or third place of the root, we are more likely to find the a vowel, as in the case of Yitzchak. Okay, why? Think about it. When you go to the doctor, okay, and he wants you to, uh, he wants to look inside your throat. He tells you what? Say, ah, ah, right. Why does the good doctor say to us, say, ah? It opens the throat. Right, exactly. This is why letters that originate from the back of the throat, the laryngeal and the pharyngeal 
letters in Hebrew, the guttural letters. One of the principles of these guttural letters is that they prefer the ah sound, the ah vowels. So you can see that the chet of Yitzchak prefers the ah rather than the o, oh, which we see with the kof of Yaakov, even though they are they basically share the same pattern. But since Yitzchak has a guttural letter, like Yishma, Yishmael also, right? We say Yishmael and not Yishmoel, right? Because the Ain also likes the Avel. Okay, so that's why we have Yaakov, Jacob. Netanel? Yes, Betsy. What about the patak under the yud of Yaakov? We'll get to that. We'll get to that. Okay. That's, the, yes, that's the next item on the comparison between Yitzhak and Yaakov. Okay, very good, very good. Okay, but I want to, first of all, notice that the O goes, the O is the standard. And the if you have the guttural letter in the second or third person, in the third, second or third root letters, as in the case of Yitzhak, or Yishmael, you would find the A. Okay? So there you go, how, you know, Isaac, Ishmael, and Jacob can teach you Hebrew. That's uh, one point about the comparison between these two, um, these two names, <laughs> right? Uh, Jerry, you'll have what to tell your son, right? Yitzhak. Uh, and, and you've got nice biblical names for your uh, children. How are they doing? I don't want to bother you in, in, while you're lunching. I just got into town, so I just had time to make this meeting. So Very good. Where are you, in Texas? I'm in Texas. I just, yeah, I just got here. Okay, send my love uh, around. Okay. Well, Uncle, D, Uncle D's in Michigan. My wife's in Santa Cruz, so that's... Oh, so, okay. <laughs> and how's your aunt doing? Is she all right, Joyce? Oh, yeah, she's doing great. Okay, excellent. Now, moving on to Yaakov and Yitzchak's second item. Note Yaakov takes the A-A -a, and Yitzchak takes the Chirik followed by the Sheva. This, it, here, it is the other way around. That is to say, the standard for the Yiktol verbs is to have a Chirik, then a Sheva. Okay, the, the standard is to have the prefix letter, let's say a yod, and then the first root letter with a sheva, let's call it R1, second root letter with a uh, with an oval, and then the third root letter. Okay? Here, Yitzchak is the standard. Why do we have Yaakov? Now you know, you can already answer that question yourself, right, Betsy? After having heard the explanation about the chet of Yitzchak? Yes, because the ayin can't take the... The ayin, uh, right, the ayin prefers not taking the sheva. And when we have the o here, due to what we call a dissimilation, uh, the reduced type of vowels it takes is the a vowel. Okay, so we have the a vowel instead the reduced aval instead of a sheva, the guttural letters, because they are very difficult to pronounce, they don't like taking a dagesh, they cannot take a dagesh. Okay, so we don't have a dagesh, at least not in Hebrew. And they prefer not taking a sheva, especially not taking a, a moving sheva. So instead of the sheva, that we would expect seeing here, we have a reduced vowel. The kamat, the patach, I mean, with a sheva, the compound sheva or the chataf patach. As a result of that, this affects also the preceding vowel, which becomes identical just without the reduction. So we see Yaakov, okay? So that's the reason we have Yaakov as opposed to Yitzchak, as opposed to Yishmael. 
Okay, and Yishmael, again, we've got Yishmael, we've got the Chirik followed by the Sheva. The Ayn doesn't like taking the uh, Sheva, so we have a reduced valve, which causes the valve preceding it to be similar to it, just without the reduction. Okay, Betsy? Yes, sir. I have, this is just one more question. Go ahead. When I see a patak under the prefix, I want to say it's a he feel, not a call. But, but when you see the first root letter with the reduced value, I understand the process here. Yes, so I sir, can I see do why, I, I can see why you would, it would be difficult. And you're right, this would be a little bit of a, of a tricky case to distinguish between the two. So you also have the vowel following the second root letter, which in the case of the kal would be an O vowel here, okay? In the case of the hifil would be a chirik, okay? So let's, let's take a good, let's see an example for that, okay? So let's take Ya'amod. Ya'amod. And the he feel for it, for the same root, which would be Ya'amid. Okay? You're right. The beginning of these two verbs is similar. So just distinguishing based on the fact that the prefix has a patah, okay, is problematic if the first root letter is a guttural letter. I, w I know you want to say, oh, I see a patah under the prefix letter. That's good indication for the hefil. And it is a good indication for the hefil um, in, in, in when the first root letter is not a guttural. But then Very you good. distinguish you. the two by looking at the vowel following the second root letter, okay? Now to make things a little bit more difficult, to, to, just to show how that the rabbit hole goes even further down, okay? Uh, you may have cases where the third root letter um, is affecting or affecting the whole thing, okay? And take, for instance, let's keep the beginning similar and just say the root is Ein Lamed Yod. So in those cases, we would see the hey, And then again, Ya'aleh in both cases. He will go up. Okay, and uh, it can be either the kal or the hefil. They are identical in these, in this cases, in these cases where the we have a pe guttural and a lamed yod. When the first root letter is a guttural and the third root letter is originally a yod, you would have uh, no morphological ability to distinguish between uh, the regular active kal and the causative, okay, cause to uh, go up, okay? So just theoretically, it could be either, okay? Yes, very good, very good. I don't know, I don't know if it's good or not, but this is the reality 